Well, as you can see, this engine has no starter recoil like it used to have, and there's no electric start either. So how do we get this engine running? Well, one option is to go out and spend 50 bucks for a starter recoil, which is insane. Or, if we wanted to do it the fancy way, you could put an electric start on this, but that's expensive. Or the other way, which I found, which seems to be the best, make your own drill-powered electric start. Here's how I did it. All you need is a drill and a few socket pieces. I took an extension here and I used a chop saw, cut off, actually no, it's this way, cut off this piece here, then that goes into the drill. This piece then attaches to a part that takes this, I believe it is a quarter inch, correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe a three-eighths, up to a half inch, I think it is, which is what this 15 16th socket piece is. It's a deep well, so that if the uh, head on the engine's crankshaft is sticking up beyond the bolt, like an inch or so, this will still work. So that's all you need there, and then I welded this on here as you can see that's connected to the big half inch adapter down there but this uh, duct tape here is just to hold this other piece together that uh, adapts the 3 8 to the half inch so that's what the duct tape is just to hold the pieces together because when the engine fires and you pull the drill back you don't want this piece staying behind on the engine crankshaft I had that happen once Thing flying around at like 3,000 RPMs. Yeah, it didn't look too good. It kind of scared me a bit. That could injure somebody flying around like that if it flies off all of a sudden. So let's go ahead and start some engines with this. Oh, and one other thing. Make sure your uh, drill is at least 18 volts because it does require quite a bit of cranking power, especially if the engine is cold. Also, I would say probably a safe range to use this kind of stuff is between um, up to well I should say up to seven horsepower because anything over that the engine starts to get really torquey and it can jerk the drill right out of your hands so you just have to be careful and uh, use discernment with this now this is a little Briggs and Stratton 3.5 horsepower now, as you can see the starter recoil is gone it broke and they wanted an outrageously high price for a new recoil and it's like no way I'm not gonna pay that much so I came up with my own idea to start this engine and here it is also it's pretty cold today below freezing I think it's like 28 or so kind of unusual for March it's supposed to be warmer than that first thing as I've done over here I have the bail bar or the safety shutoff strapped down with a zip tie. Keep that in mind as well. And don't forget to take it back off when you start mowing. Because you'll need that to keep the engine running while you're cranking it. Now, we'll prime the engine a bit here. Set the drill speed on high. Make sure the clutch is off, like we see there. Put it in forward. Here we go. to it makes starting your engine really easy and it's so cheap even if you bought these pieces individually at a hardware store you probably wouldn't spend over five dollars so it's a really cool cool and nifty trick I think we'll just do it again here
It's that simple. Now you've seen it with a little Briggs 3.5 horsepower. Now let's try this Briggs 5 horsepower engine. No primer bulb, so we'll just use a choke. And we don't have to hold a bail bar down to keep the engine running either, so that'll make it a little bit easier. Here's the choke right here. Same 5 or 15 16 size nut on the engine crankshaft so it fits. And let's give it a crank. So you can use this on both vertical and horizontal shaft engines, pretty cool.